Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is finally time to capture first light with the Edge HD. Okay, so I'm really excited because the time has finally come to capture first light with the Celestron Edge 8 inch HD telescope. Now those who follow my channel will know that I put a video up a couple of months ago saying that I've gone out and I've picked up a second hand Edge HD and I'm really excited that I'm actually finally able to use it. And I've been waiting all that time to actually get all of the parts needed for this rig. So a few parts were out of stock and really difficult to uh, source, the main one being the off axis guider, but I now have that um, and I am ready to capture first light. Um, I also had a few other issues with parts which turned up damaged, which I'll tell you a little bit more about um, when I have this set up. But now I need to go outside, I need to get this onto the mount and try and get it balanced. Okay, so the scope is on the mount and it's all balanced and that actually didn't take as long as I thought it was going to. So now I'll really quickly run through what I'm shooting with tonight and what is making up this new rig. Okay, so I will start with the telescope. This is, as you all know, the Celestron Edge HD 8 inch telescope. This has a native focal length of 2000 millimeters at f10, but I'm going to be using it with the reducer. So that takes it down to 1400 millimeters at f7. This is sat on top of the Ioptron CEM60 mount. So it should be more than capable of holding the uh, eight inch telescope. So up top I have the ASI Air Pro. Now this is controlling everything. So this is controlling the guiding. This is controlling the image capture. Um, I have a couple of power outputs coming out of the ASI Air Pro. One is to the dew heater. Um, so this Lynx Astra dew heater, which I got with the scope and the, the shield um, should keep all of the dew off. Uh, mean I don't uh, fog up or mist up overnight. The other one is going down to the camera and powering the camera. Okay, so moving on to the image train then. Um, here is the reducer. So this reducer came with the scope when I picked it up, which made it a little bit of a bargain. I have the ZWO EAF and the uh, attachment bracket for the SCT style telescope. So again, this was another thing that I had to source and had to wait for to get delivered. So this held up um, me using this telescope, but now it's arrived, it was nice and easy to fit. Hopefully it should work pretty well. The main problem and the main delay I've had with this setup was this, the Celestron off-axis guider. So I could not find one in stock anywhere in the UK. So I ordered one from the States and when it arrived, the prism, the, the actual mirror in the prism was cracked. So I had to send it back um, and they have sourced a new prism for me. So that held everything up, but thankfully, it is uh, it's here now and it should work really well. I have a new guide camera for this rig. Um, lots of people recommended the 174mm Mini as the guide camera to go along with the off-axis guider. 
So I also have a new camera, so I have sold one of my Astro cams. I sold my one-shot colour camera, the 2600 MC Pro, and I replaced it with the 294 Mono, so the 294 MM Pro. Now this has a smaller sensor, and also the pixel scale works much better and fits nicer with the edge. So hopefully this, uh, this will work really well. I also picked up a another set of filters um, so in here this is the seven position filter wheel um, in here I have the Antlia um, three narrowband filters I have the smaller ones so these are the 36 millimeter filters and I also have the badder LRGB filter set as well which I'm going to be using tonight so that's my new rig I'm really excited to use it it has taken quite a long time to actually put together as I'm sure a lot of you are aware, there are quite uh, long delays with some Astro gear there at the moment, but hopefully it's worth the wait. Okay, so that's the new rig. I'm really excited that it's finally together and I can actually use it tonight. So the first target I'm going for is M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy. And there's two main reasons why I chose this target. The first is the location. So it should be nice and high, nice and visible all night long, as opposed to a few other targets, a few other Galaxy targets, which either disappear behind my house or behind the neighbor's tree. So that was the main one. The other reason I chose the Whirlpool Galaxy is that it's quite quite an easy target to image, I think. I've done it a few times before. It's a very bright galaxy. It should fill the frame really nicely. So yeah, I'm excited to actually get using this after a very, very long delay. So now all I need to do is just wait for it to get dark enough to image and hopefully do this rig justice. Okay, so the telescope is focused. I'm really pleased that I was able to achieve focus so quickly. I've polar aligned the scope, so I'm almost ready to collect some data. So I'll show you what that first sub looks like. I'm really excited to see what it looks like when it pops up on my iPad. Okay, so this is the moment I've waited almost three months for that first sub to roll in off the Edge HD, and I'm really excited to see what it looks like on the iPad. Now, the guiding's looking good, so I'm really happy with that with the off-axis guider. Um, I just hope this first sub looks good. So it's just about to load now, and there you go. Okay, so yeah, I'm really happy with that. Stars look nice and round to me. Um, lots of detail in the Galaxy itself. Stars are looking pretty good when I zoom in as well. So yeah, overall, really, really pleased with this for a first sub. Um, maybe there's a little bit of elongation in the stars, especially when I go out to the edges. Um, so maybe a few tweaks with the collimation of the scope. Um, but for a first um, attempt, guiding's going well. It's about point between 0.4 and 0.6. Um, everything seems to be going really well. So overall, absolutely delighted with this. I'm gonna let it run and see how much data I can actually collect. Okay, so after three nights of collecting data, I have finally edited an image together. So I'll show you the data that I managed to capture. So this was the luminance data, and I was quite pleased with this. I think the stars were looking quite nice and round and sharp, which um, was one of my main concerns with that focal length, but I'm glad that uh, they are looking nice. So this was my luminance. This was my red. This was my green. And then this here was my blue data. So again, quite happy with, with all of this. Um, to edit it, I took the, um, the stars out of each of the RGB um, and the luminance data, and I then edited them together as a starless image. Um, and I think that that turned out quite well. Um, I then played around with the color to try and get the color looking nice. Um, in this image. So I did a dynamic background extraction, then played around with a few masks and the curves to get it looking like this. I did the same with the luminance data and I was really pleased with how this luminance data was looking. I was able to pull out quite a lot of detail in 
um, the luminance data and I added a little bit of sharpness to this as well. Um, and then I combined them both together to make my LRGB image. I also added in some HA data. Now this HA data um, is not the best data set ever. There was only about an hour and a half, maybe two hours max of HA data. So not a lot to add in there, but I wanted to try and make a HA LRGB image. Now the method I used to do that was um, Sean's method from Visible Dark. So I'm sure you all know his channel. He does some amazing tutorials. Um, I followed along with how to add in um, HA to an LRGB image and it worked really well. So I was really happy with that. I will make sure I link his video in the description below. Um, but overall, I was pretty happy with the final image, especially for first light with the Edge HD. Um, I think I made one mistake with the gain setting for this uh, for this image. Um, I put the 294 a gain of 100 and everything I've read um, online since then is that at 120 the camera performs much better. So um, that was a mistake I think I made um, and I will learn from that. Moving forward, um, making sure I have that gain set to to 120 but i will put the final image up on screen for you now thank you so much for watching please do let me know your thoughts in the comments below and i will see you in the next video